Yo, Lil Mo, what you on, gang? What's the word, bro? Shit, cool and good to have you on the show, man. Appreciate you coming out. For sure, you know, it's love. One of the ghosts, one of the youngest doing it out here. You know that, bro. She's a little good looking, bro. All right, bet. I'm going to take it back. I want to start with your upbringing. Can you tell us what neighborhood you grew up in? I grew up in Washington Park area, 56 in Michigan, 56 in Wabash, 57, 58, and 59th, all through that area, Washington Park area. Okay, that's the six block? Yeah, that's the six block for sure. All right. Shit, what, what school you went to? I went to Carter. I went to Carter. I ain't like, I went to a lot of grammar schools, bro, and then I got into some sh shit. Like, I was in the street so wild, I ain't need, I had to drop out of school at a young age. I ain't gonna lie, I'm smart as hell and shit, but it's just like the situ shit I had going on in the streets and the situation I was in, so I had to get up out of that for my safety, you know? I go lie, I've been doing my research on you. You seem like a smart individual, man. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, what type of household did you come from? I ain't gonna lie. Like, my household, I ain't come from no bad household. Like, I did. I went to school, all type of shit. Like, I've been through all type of shit. Like, my parents good. They go to work. My mama, like, when I was 10, no, I was five. It was in 2010. In 2010, my mom went to the hospital. She had a stroke, and I moved with my father. And that, like, kind of changed me. But I was still going to school, going, doing football and shit until I got, like, nine and ten. And when I moved on Michigan, it was, like, a whole different... It changed because, like, I was around the shit. And like my pops, he always tried to bring me away from that shit because he already been there, he done that before, so he was trying to show me better. But like, I ain't gonna lie, the, I was already in the community and where I was at, I just got brought in the shit. And you know what happened, that's where, why I'm here right now today, you know? Shit, growing up, was your parents together or did they split? Because a lot of people out mm -hmm. here, their parents, they split early on. Nah, my parents went together, like, my parents was together for me, if you get what I'm saying. Like, for me, they was together, but relationship, nah, 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 my parents went together. Shit, I wanted to ask you, when did you start making music? I started making music and probably, like, I've been rapping and freestyling and shit since I was, like, 10. I've been doing that shit. I always knew how to rap. But when I really started recording and made my first song was like 2016 or 17, I made, like the first song I dropped, Six Blocker, that's my first song that I made in 2017. And I was like 12 years old, I'm 19 now, so that was a minute ago, bro. And then I dropped What I Say, that was my second song I ever made. And I was like 13 then when I made What I Say. And then it was history after that, I started rapping, you know? So it didn't take you too long to make your first hit? Nah, my first song went up like six block was at a million already. I'm like, damn, it's going up like this. Then I drop what I say. When I drop what I say, it did two million. And then I'm like, damn, I'm going crazy. I already got all type of label texting me and shit. I dropped. One of mine, and then when I dropped one of mine, that's when my career started happening. I started getting signed. I was all into, like, I was getting into the industry more. Like, I ain't know about it. Like, that's why. Right now, I'm gonna keep it real to you, bro. A lot of shit I knew, if I would've knew back then, bro, I'd be father, but I don't blame myself, because that's what you go through shit and learn, bro. That's so I went through situations and I learned from it. But back then, when I started, when I was coming on, bro, like I was just in this shit doing it for the fun of it. But I ain't really know like the game to this shit, if you get what I'm saying. Now I got I know the game to this shit because I'm a little bit older for and I got bigger things that I'm in this shit for. I ain't in, in this shit just for fun. I'm in this shit to make it out of it. So yeah, I had fun when I started, but now I'm on a whole different type of time, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay, did, now did you expect that song, Six Block, to, um, did you expect it to take off the way that it did? Because a lot of people, they out here working for a long time before they get a hit song. Nah, I, 
I, I knew, like I had the feeling, cause like my homies, I'm not the first one that rap. Like I already had homies that been rapping, been getting millions of views since 2015, 2016, 2017. Ruga and Dusky, the man in my face, Van Trees. So they would used to always say my names in songs like Lil Mo, Lil Mo this, Lil Mo that. And them songs I already had millions of views and stuff. So everybody like, who is Lil Mo, who Lil Mo? So I let it just play out. I already made songs and stuff. Don't get me wrong, I made songs around the town. My homie them was rapping, but I just waited because I felt like it wasn't my time. Phone them, I already had the scene, so I just sat back and waited till my turn. Mm -hmm. So when my homie passed away, that's when I stepped into it. Like I had to take step in his shoes and take heed to this shit and I started learning like how this shit go, how it move and I started dropping everything. I was dropping back to back and I it was history after that, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. Okay, it was history after that. Now rest in peace here, homie, would you say he motivated you? Nah, most definitely. He the reason why I do this shit for sure. Cause like when I was at first I was like, yeah, I know how to rap, but I'm not rapping, bro. I'm out here. And as I got older I'm like yeah, that's what, what we thought together. And now he ain't with me no more. So it's bigger than just being out here. You gotta get from out here, not trying to be out here. Cause out here, I'm gonna keep it real to like street, street people, every street people, real niggas, whatever they call themselves, they know how this street go. I ain't gonna lie to you. If you don't get out this shit, bro, you're gonna be dead or in jail, bro. It ain't no ill bust about it, bro. It ain't too many people that can say, like, they still in the game and they out doing good. Like, everybody who been in this shit for real, bro, they doing bad, they dead or they locked up, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. So, like, it's a certain time when you gonna get to a point and be like, that shit not even worth it no more, bro. That's it, that's how I feel. Type of shit, you out here dropping knowledge, man. Yeah, for sure. So not too long after that, you said it took you three songs to, uh, to get signed, or was it your first song did you get signed? No, nah, I got signed in three months off, off my third song. When I dropped, I dropped Six Block, I dropped What I Say, and then I dropped One of Mine. So when I dropped One of Mine, that's when I got signed to Capitol Records. I got signed to Capitol Records, and then I started making all the rest of the songs, Risky, Oh No, and all the other shit that you were seeing. But now I'm tripping. I'm going, because I can win Scrappers Drop. Because I think Scrappers Drop too before uh, one of mine. It was probably four songs, bro, because Scrappers Drop, Scrappers did drop before I got signed. I wasn't even signed yet, bro. So that was probably four songs, bro. Yeah, it was four songs. Then I got signed. It was four months. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the, the deal signing process? Was it like a bidding war? Was you shopping around? Like, what made you go with Capital over the other ones? Uh, I ain't gonna lie. I went with Capital because I felt like they had the best interest in me. So I was like, I was going around the options. I had multiple labels trying to sign me. But I went with Capital, and when I went with them, I ain't gonna lie, I felt like I felt like that was the right choice that I made because I went over the contract. I felt like that was the right contract for me and I did it. Only thing about that, like I said, I jumped in the game here first. I ain't no person that's gonna sugarcoat none. I'm finna let you know everything, bro. I jumped in the head first without even knowing what's really going on. So me saying that, that's just like how I tell young niggas, they jump off the porch straight into a casket, bro. This is the same way, like, but it's in a different way. I'm talking about like me going to the business and I jumped in this shit. When I got into the business, I ain't I wasn't in it for just getting out of this shit or really knowing what's going on. I didn't know what's going on. So I was just doing what I love to do. So when I was dropping, bro, I'm dropping, I'm dropping, but I ain't knowing like what come with it. You gotta put work in, you gotta put effort in, you gotta be in there all night. Like I ain't know that, yeah, if you don't work, that shit can go down or people who won't even fuck with you no more. I ain't know that. Like I got too big head at a point in time and I ain't gonna lie. I said that to myself and me being a man, I can say that to myself. Like I was too big head, like I'm getting, like ain't nobody can't fuck with me or I can't go do shit with certain niggas. It was a point of time, bro, everybody who you can even think about was texting me about a feature. I'm telling motherfuckers I ain't doing shit with him. Like 
my I'm letting it, my head get the best of me, bro. I ain't gonna lie. And then by the time when like the shit was catching up and hitting hard, I was already almost back down where I came from. And what I mean by that, like I went, I've been like got 200,000 and went broke. I ain't have a dollar in my pocket. I've been there before and I'm not scared to say that because I ain't gonna lie, a lot of people want to glorify like when they up and not to struggle and when they down, you get what I'm saying, bro? Like people don't keep it real. Like you keep it real with yourself, that's how you be the best. I'm keeping it real, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I ain't know a lot of shit. So at the end of the label, bro, I got, I end up, like they let the person who signed me, Jeffrey Vaughn, he had something going on. He probably got let go. Then they let me go from Capitol Records. I was with them for like three years. So then I was like, I sat down. I'm like, damn. I ain't thinking like how I think now. I'm like, damn, I, I, it's old way. I can't do nothing without them. But as I got older, bro, I started thinking like, bro, at the end of the day, they came to me for me. They ain't come to me because of them. They came to me for what I was doing. At. And when I got that same energy and put that same energy in that, that's when all the same shit started coming back. But it came back 10 times more because it's all for me now. And now I know what I'm doing. So my head locked on to the game, bro. So I really felt like I had to explain that to you, bro, because it was you was going to ask it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Type shit. I see you've been through a lot of interviews. You know where this is already going. Yeah, I already know what you're going to ask. That's why I just explained it to you, bro. I already know. <laughs> All right, can you explain the terms of the deal, how many uh, projects or copies it was for what amount of money? It was a $3 million deal, $200,000 advance, three albums. I was supposed to drop three albums. So it was for three albums. Did you complete that? No, I ain't complete it. I got to like the second one and then I ain't complete that all three of the albums, but that's why I just told you I got they let me go. That's what I was just explaining to you before you even asked me. I was just telling you like I got let go cuz I told you like yeah, I was putting the work in doing what I was doing, but it was a lot of stuff. It's a lot of shit I can't even explain. For me telling you why they let me go, I'd be lying to you right now, bro, because at the end of the day, I know anything I did, I put all my effort into it. So even though when it was time I was slacking, when I went there, I did put all my effort into it, but it went 100% for like I'm in there doing what I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I was doing putting all my effort into it to the wrong shit. Like I'm going to get half full and I'm I'm going to get half going out of town. Worry about my homies, all the wrong shit, bro. And when it comes to the studio, I'm to like, man, I ain't gotta go to session shit like that. I was doing all type of shit, bro. And now I see what my mistakes was for, and I learned from that shit. That's all that was, bro. Would you do it again? Uh, with the label? Yeah. No. Honestly, no. I don't, I ain't, I ain't knocking no label for, I fuck with labels, but I know what I know. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I know what I know. What I know now, I can do this shit by myself. I really don't need no nigga label. If I knew that before, I would've never even signed, because at the end of the day, bro, I, I, I believe in myself and more than anybody else believe in me. So that to be said, bro, I know what I can do on my own and I know what I can build. Like just how they got their label, I can have my own label at the same time. So it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Like if you put your effort into what you want to be, you're going to be the greatest. It's, it don't matter. Everybody fail. You get what I'm saying? You're going to fail at that point in time, bro. But it's all about you getting back up and keep going, bro. That's what it's really about, bro. Because people want to see you fall down, bro. They want to see that shit. You can't let that happen, though, bro. Now, someone who's independent and who used to be in the label, can you tell us what's the pros and cons of having the label? Come again, I ain't hear what you said the second. Say it again. I said, someone who's independent but you used to have a label, can you tell us what's like the pros and cons, the goods and the bads of having a label? Goods with having a label, like the label got everything you need. Like they got, they can, they can get you where you want with all type of people, different artists, bro. They get you the craziest features, bro. They can they can boost your music up the most the highest than it ever been, 
But the bag with coming with a label, like I'm gonna keep it real, I ain't gonna sugarcoat it with nothing. You gotta like watch every label ain't good, every contract ain't good, bro, cause like you gotta read, you gotta read them contracts, you gotta know what they saying in them contracts. Like it'll be some shit you signing your life over to and you don't even know it, bro. So like it's certain shit you gotta watch, bro. You gotta pay attention. That's why I read and it's fundamental. You gotta look at that shit, bro, because they'll be digging you without you even knowing. There's some people get into this shit, bro, and can't even get out their contract if you get what I'm saying, bro. I want that type of person because I, I already knew what my contract said and I knew what they wanted and I knew what I wanted because what they wanted wasn't even about what they wanted. It was about what I wanted because they was coming to me and I know what I'm worth. So I told them like what it was and the contract was good. It was what I wanted for. I got my masters and everything, bro. So I was good, but that's the good thing about the label, bro. Like they got people to get you to the next place. You could get big features, bro. You could be the biggest artist you can be, bro. But the bad thing is, bro, they can bring you down at the same time too, bro. That's all I'm gonna say, bro. All right, so now when you're doing business in, in all these different states, and I, I hear you say some label deals may be bad. Do you feel like you come across people that may not take you serious because of your age? You say what again? Say it again. I say you're doing all these business with all these grown folks. You know, it could be a little intimidating when they come at you and they offer you these deals. Do you, do you feel like they're taking advantage of some of these artists because of their age? Oh, yeah, most definitely. And it ain't even just the age, bro. Let me break it down to you, bro. Well, young rappers, they know like they ain't never had nothing. So when they see a dollar sign, they gonna jump into it, if you get what I'm saying, bro. So they know like the check can blind the rappers from what the bigger picture is. If you, I'm trying to break it down to you, if you get what I'm saying. Like they can show you commas, bro, but they not showing you your future, what you can be bigger than that. Like if you really put your all in it and work 100% and without nothing, cause you don't really need no label if you already got your own stuff going on, bro. You got your own thing going on for, and you know what you're doing, bro. Honestly, bro, you don't really need no label, bro. But I'm not saying nobody don't got to sign with no label because the label can't help you for, with my opinion, bro, like you really don't need no label because you is the label, bro. That's all I'm gonna tell you, though. Okay, stay independent. Wait. Nah, I'm staying independent. I ain't telling people stay independent. Y'all choice is y'all, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I just said I'm gonna stay independent because what I know and the shit I've been through, bro. I ain't knocking nobody for what they doing, bro. So I want to ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges you face dealing with this music shit? Uh, hitting rock bottom. Like, me hitting rock bottom, meaning like, show the music and fame, show who really with you and not, bro. So like when you up at the top, bro, like everybody coming out everywhere, bro. I witnessed this shit, but when you get down, bro, motherfuckers disappear like the wind, bro. But one thing you gotta know, like, you, you gotta look out for that type of shit, bro. And I ain't look out for that shit. I ain't know that type of shit at first cause I ain't never been to that type of point. But when I been there and I seen that shit, bro, cause I been up and been down for when I seen who was with me, money rule the world, bro. I promise you, bro, like that shit be crazy, bro. So you just gotta really watch out who, who say they with you, bro. Cause the people who with you will stab you in your back, bro, at the same time. Speaking facts. I heard you was fighting a case when you signed your deal. Can you speak on that? Yeah, it's over with. Um, <laughs> you were goofy. I was, when I was like 13, I had a 10 murder, but I did like 10 months in 2019. They ain't had no evidence. They let me go. They put me on house arrest. Now, when they put me on house arrest, I end up, I was rapping, I'm like, I'm in that motherfucker, like, what the fuck I'm gonna do, bro? On some real shit, I'm thinking, like, what can I do with myself? Cause I ain't got shit going on. I'm like, I got a song, I could drop that motherfucker. But I can't move how I want to when I'm on this band. So I made the choice to cut my, cut my band for, I dropped the song, and then when I dropped the song, I went to Cali, I'm dropping back to back. I dropped back to back, boom, boom, boom. I went to Cali, end up signing my deal, so. 
I'm gonna break it down to you, folks. I used to drive 29 hours just because I ain't wanna get on a plane, because I ain't know. I thought I was gonna get locked up when I get on a plane, bro. I'm driving 29 hours, then back tired as hell, back hurt, all type of shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. But I did it, and, and it, was a, it was a reason why I did it, because I achieved my goal, and when I did that, bro, it showed, it showed me like can't nothing really stop you for what you want to be, bro. So when I was with the, in the court shit, bro, I did that. I cut my band. I was on the run for three years, bro. The whole time me rapping, I'm on the run the whole time. And boom, I end up going back for another case. And when I, I got found guilty for that case, I'm all right, I was in there for a couple months. And then they got to the other case, the big case, the attempt murder that I was previously in there for when I was in there the first time. Now they got to that case, they was really trying to hold it back on that case because they knew they ain't had no evidence on me, so they were trying to hold the case back. But the judge told them, like, the, the same day he found me guilty. I'm in the courtroom, he found me guilty that day. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna go back upstairs. I'm like, he tell they ass like this, he, but this other case I need to sort out. They say, they say, our, our boss not ready. He tell them, like, I'm the boss of this court. Matter of fact, when y'all go to recess, I need y'all to call him. Tomorrow we coming back to court. I need that case settled out. So he made, the day he found me guilty, the next day he made us come to court again. And when we came to court, they say the complaining witness do not want to corroborate no more. So the case was dismissed and I beat the case just like that, but. Shit. I was gonna ask you more questions, but you pretty much answered those. Do you have a response? Did you see the video that Chirac Humor dropped of your arrest video where y'all <laughs> were shooting dice? <laughs> yeah, I seen that, bro. I seen that, bro. Shit, can you tell us what was going on that day? It was just fucking with us, G. See, that's, that's just the show, like, had the police be in the area, bro. Like, they be thirsty, bro. And even when you ain't even doing nothing, that's how bad they hate a motherfucker, bro. Like, I ain't even doing shit. We out there just playing with dice. They lock folding them up for not, for me. They told them, like, y'all ain't taking him to school. Y'all going to jail for being with a minor. I'm damn. But I'm talking shit to him and shit. I'm talking shit to him. I'm like, Man, y'all can't do shit to me. I'm making it worse for four now. They uh, shut the fuck up. I'm nigga, I ain't going to jail. What you telling me? Shut up, four. I'm chief. They take me to the station. They take me to the station. I'm still talking shit. I get signed out. My pops come get me. But that was that wasn't about nothing. That just goes to show like how it is in the neighborhood with our police officer, bro. All they do is harass us, bro. And that's even when we ain't doing nothing, cause the person they picture us to be. They say we are killers and gangsters, bro. We is a family at the end of the day, bro. Just like how they got they, bro, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Like Tupac said, they is the biggest gang. They bigger than all of us, bro. They bigger than all of us, bro. So that type of shit, that wasn't nothing but them fucking with us on some, on some bullshit. That's all, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I can't put it no other way. They was just on some bullshit, G. Should I see that a lot? They just hop out and just start searching, motherfucker. Yeah, for no reason, G. Hey, motherfucker ain't even doing nothing, G. But that's how it is. That's why I stop even making myself seen so you can't even see me. I ain't even gotta go through that. If you don't see me, you can't do that to me, if you get what I'm saying. Right. Shit, do you feel like the street life is worth it for the young people coming up? What you mean, gangs? Shit, people, shit. It doesn't have to be necessarily game, but anything. Game, drugs. Street life, like, street life, bro, street life is real. So when you in the streets, drugs ain't none of that shit good for no kids, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I took that shit, I ain't gonna lie. I took that shit because I had the wrong motherfuckers around me misleading me, bro. And then I was going through shit because I ain't had my mama and a lot of shit. Like, people take that shit for what they go through. A lot of these kids these days, they just get out here and just do shit that they don't even know about, bro. So I'm going to just say, hell no, nah, drugs ain't good. Them motherfuckers kill you and turn you to because you will be doing something. And then when you get older, it's going to turn you to do some other shit. And then you, it's over with for you. You out here on the streets. And then the game, bro, all they going to do is tell you what's good. It ain't going to tell you the outcomes. They'll tell you. They going to tell you the good, good outcomes, up, but not the bad outcomes. Up. Like, bro, they don't know, bro. 
at the end of the day, when when the table turned and when that door closed, bro, with in jail, you ain't got nobody in there, bro. And in your casket, you can't hit nobody. So me saying that, you don't want to be neither place. That shit ain't for you, bro. I'm cheap. You sound wise, gang. I ain't going to lie. For sure. But um, I was going to say, <laughs> he an old soul at heart. <laughs> Can you tell us, like, any, uh, what was your favorite music, your favorite song you made? My favorite song? Yeah. My favorite song is Lost Myself and No Love. Them my favorite two songs, personally. Because them, me getting into my personal life, bro, like, yeah, anybody can do what I did as a shorty. Anybody can go on the block. Anybody go tow the gun. That don't make me who I am, bro. Me make me who I am. So that was me bringing a whole nother side out of me. That's what I want to tell a lot of these shorties, too. Just because you got a gun or kill somebody don't make you a man, bro. Like, that shit don't make you no man, bro. Who don't do shit, bro? Morals, principles, loyalty, real shit. You gotta stand on business, bro. Like, people don't know, like, you ain't, how you a real nigga, you can't even help people around you, bro. You get what I'm saying? It's certain shit, it's levels to these games. Motherfuckers gotta understand. I stay on my five P's, proper preparation, prevent poor performance, and that's how I stay alive, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. You got a project called Scrappers, right? Right. So who is Scrap to you? Like, what is your relationship with him? Scrap, Scrap, bro, that's like a big brother for Scrap is who I hood. Scrap game, like the Scrappers, that's not no music shit, bro. This is a real person. Brian Weekly, that's a real person. So when we say Scrappers, bro, that's his legacy, bro. So we do everything to keep his name alive, bro. No bop, Scrap. Scrap is one of them type of persons, but I ain't even gonna lie to you. Scrap one of them type of person, bro. He was leading, he was a leader for when he was all on his own for me saying that, like he ain't need nobody. He was stepping, coming for himself, and he was a real person. Not even a real nigga, I'm not even gonna say a real nigga. He was a real person, he loved everybody around him. So what we do, bro, we keep his name forever living, bro. We drop, we always say his name, make sure people know who he is, cause no bad he was one of the, one of the realest niggas off the block, bro, cause ain't nobody coming like him. This a nigga that don't even, he ain't even gonna lie to you, bro, on some real shit, so we just keep it going. I ain't gonna lie, that's how that be with the scrappers, with the mixtape, the shit you seen, that was just us keeping his name alive, bro. Now, on that Scrappers project, you collaborated with Ruger. Right. Uh, what is your relationship with Ruger today? That's my brother. All right, so one thing I respect about Lil Mo is like amidst all the internet drama or whatever's going on, I seen on your j Man interview when y'all was talking about whatever, even though Whoever may have tried to put you under the bus or however it went down, you didn't throw no dirt on his name in the interview. Or you, sure, you just kept sure. it all respectful. For sure, that's the type of person I am. Like, what another person do, I can't knock them for doing, bro. I just take notes of shit, but I still love a motherfucker. That love, like, when you love a person, that, that shit just don't go away, bro. Because I ain't fake, bro. And this ain't no fake love. I got real, genuine love with motherfuckers who I love, so. I don't even take that as like offensive, for. I just take it and take notes from that shit, bro. That's all, bro. Type shit. So now, another rising star out of Chicago was uh, Dusky the Man. Right. Now, who is Dusky to you? How was your relationship with him? That's my big brother, fool. Dusky. That's my dog, fool. Dusky taught me. That's come again, like when we go back earlier, when we were just talking. That's what, who I was telling you about, who got me started rapping while I started doing that. Inspired me, Dusky the man, like when he passed away in 2018, October 9th, when he passed away, I ain't gonna lie, that just took me to a whole nother level. Like, I gotta take his spot and take his shoes, bro. I gotta step in his shoes and keep going with it because I can't let his legacy die. So that's why I was just, Kept going with Dusky. Dusky, my brother, he's my pro 
I'm his protege, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. He taught me most of the shit I know, bro. Even though half of the shit I already knew about myself, but he taught me most of the shit I know. So that's my brother, man. Now we seen you in his music video, his Who Run It remix. Mm -hmm. Can you give us like a little breakdown of how that day went down? <laughs> that, that music video. I ain't got that. That whole day we was we was teed up. He was telling me that was on his birthday. We shot the video on his birthday. He was teed up, man. He coming up like I'm finna shoot a video, bitch. He. And I, I said your name in the song. I ain't even know though, cause he used to, he the type of nigga, bro, just go make some shit. And then when it's time for the video, he, I, it's time to shoot it. I ain't even know the song, G. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't even know the motherfucking song. I was just in there. He said my name, I'm in that bitch on TV. Get in there, we all in the hallway. We walk in the hallway. We shoot the video. Now I'm thinking about it. You know, at the time that you shooting the video, you never know what's gonna blow up or not, bro. But I just know. I was in the studio. Matter of fact, hold on, G, I'm tripping. That was the other song. That was um, him and Wooski, bro. I'm tripping, I'm tripping. Who run it? Wooski, I ain't hear the song until we got in the video. Now, who run it? I'm tripping. Who run it? I was in the studio when he made that. I was asleep so motherfucking long. He was up to the next day on Dooski. It's 8 o'clock, the light come up. He still recording. I'm damn boy, it's time to leave this motherfucker. I'm gonna get up out of here, cause I wasn't really rapping then. I ain't understand. I'm like, he here all fucking day, G. Motherfucker need to go, G. Then I hit a song, I'm like, damn boy, you just went crazy on this bitch. Now we drop that bitch, we go to the hallway, we drop that bitch, get to shooting the scenes, we riding around. That's a lot of scenes that they don't even got in the video, bro. We was riding around all around Chicago, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Yardy Films used to be our cameraman, bro. Yardy, Yardy OS used to be scared as hell, boy. I, I ain't gonna lie, boy. You know I ain't lying, boy. I'm gonna keep it real, G. No, but. Shout out Yardy. I got a vlog with Yardy. I seen y'all had them deep as hell on Lakeshore. What was that, Lakeshore? Or... No, that wasn't Lakeshore, but that video. Which one? Y'all was on the highway. And the Who Running video. Yeah, 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 yeah. They like put the knees down, G. Yeah, we was on that. Oh, that was him? That was his voice? Yeah, that was me. That that was my homie Tim and said put them heats down. I said, man, fuck that. We've been riding all night, G. That was me, G. Hell yeah, I was talking at the end. Um, G. You okay. gotta you go back, you would hear that shit. That was me talking with my homie, man. My homie was talking and then shit, fool. Yeah, that video, that was that was one to remember, G. I ain't gonna lie to you. Now another name you just mentioned was uh was Wooski. Yeah, Wooski. Could you speak on your relationship with Wooski? yeah, Wooski, that's my that's my brody foe. I've been around Wooski multiple times. Like when I was a shorty growing up, I've been around Wooski a lot of times for Wooski. Like I ain't gonna lie, Wooski just like me, for real nigga for stand on what he lived by. And then that's all I can say shit about Wooski, bro, because I ain't going to lie. I just know what I know about him, for Wooski, we from a whole different type of area. You get what I'm saying, for I've been around him a couple times. Yeah, that's my boy. I've been around him for years, but I ain't going to break it down like I've been around him, and I know his whole lifestyle, because, man, I mean his whole life, because you got to think about it, game. My homies, ain't nobody on my block my age, bro. My homies is 25, 26, 28, bro. Wooski them is way older than me, bro, even though they're my crowd and shit, bro. But I just know off what I, I seen, gang, so I can't speak on everything about Wooski, if you get what I'm saying, bro. So you said a lot of your... A lot of your crowd is older than you. Yeah, they way older than me, bro. So do you is Lil Mo the solo dolo type person or is you gonna catch him around a bunch of people? He'll catch me around my people. Okay. <laughs> my motherfucker people, nobody else, I ain't got time. Like I ain't gonna lie. When you get older, bro, it, it be like you you understand in life like Every time you can't just be going outside, you gotta be behind in business, you don't need to be partying. And it's sometimes when you think you're going to have fun, you will be getting into some bullshit. So you just go sit down and you will be with your people. Or sometimes you just be with yourself, bro. It ain't always cause for you to get up and go outside because that should have caused you your life, bro. Man, I just had a question. I just gave it up. <laughs> that one first. <laughs> just walked down. Oh, okay. 
So, shit, have you been on tour? Has Lil Mo been on tour? I ain't gonna lie, I ain't been on tour because the time when I was when I was really doing what I was doing, gee, I was on the run, fo. And I could have been on tour, but I was too scared they were gonna snatch me off the stage, though, gee. Because I had a 10 murder, so I was being Seriously? cautious. Yeah, I was being cautious, bro. Now I'm getting back in and I'm finna get back moving around like how I was because I had. Even cause when I just got out of jail, I took a little break still, cause I had I was still on papers and shit. I couldn't even move how I wanted to. I can't even go out of town for real, bro. I'm a motherfucker flight risk. It's certain shit that people don't know. I was just getting myself my business and my priorities straight first, and then now I can really do this shit without even looking over my shoulder. If you get what I'm saying, bro. Yeah, I understand. So you haven't been on no sh no shows. Nah, I did shows before. Oh, okay. I did shows before. I didn't do multiple uh, um in cause, a row. Uh, yeah, cause I'm on the motherfucker run, so I ain't finna be playing with myself. I'm like, yeah, that I'm missing money at the same time, but I'm already got money too. So it was like. I ain't finna risk going to jail, fuck that shit for that little 10,000, 5,000, whatever it was, and I got 100,000, I'm nah, G, I'm cool, G, so, at the time. And now I could do it, so I could drop, I could go, go do shows and shit. I could go get that little 10 and do that shit, bro, but back then it was too risky, so I wasn't even trying to do it, bro. Right, right, right. Shit, so on another topic, there's a lot of backdooring going around in the city. How do you feel about that? We, we just seen Recipes, Lil School, and, and Nene Brooks. How do you feel about that? Hey, dude. Now, was you a fan of his music? Who the fuck is Nene Brooks? <laughs> I ain't on no funny shit. Get your goof ass on. Who is Nene Brooks, though, bro? That's, uh... Huh? Yeah, that's the girl that dropped Oh, that's the one who was texting and shit. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm gonna keep it real with you. On some real shit. I'm keeping a hundred, but I can't keep it to a hundred because you on this count. But listen to me, G. Bro, when females do certain shit, bro, they put themselves in situations, bro, that they can't get out of, bro. I ain't saying she did do it, but the shit that I seen, she did. You get what I'm saying? It looked like, I ain't gonna lie, that's fluky shit, bro. When you set people up, karma is a motherfucker. This shit come back and bite you in the ass bro, quicker than you. Same shit, like I say, bro, that's even with this killing and shooting shit. What you give out in the world, that's what's gonna come back to you, bro. And that's with anybody, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, so. I, me being real, bro, I'm cheap. I, I don't know none of them gang, but if that happened, how that happened, bro, I ain't got nothing to say about it. I can't say nothing about it, bro. I can't feel sorry about it, because she ain't feel sorry about when that man life got took from me, bro. Right, right, right. A lot of these younger kids, they listen to this music, but they don't understand how real it could get. Yeah, it's real, bro, because it's like me, Motherfucker be out here like, oh yeah, I'm gonna kill motherfucker every day. Me, I'm the type of person I'll let you know, like, bro, I'm doing this shit to protect, I'm gonna do something to protect my family and myself. I don't never wanna see another person, mother, cry, or none of that shit, cause I know how that shit feel, bro. That shit bring real pain to people's family, bro. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna protect myself 100%, bro. I don't be on that type of town. A lot of shorties be out here for the wrong reason, and they ain't got, that's cause the guidance, they ain't got right guidance, and some of them just don't get no fuck, bro. So I don't need to be trying to talk to them. I be saying, I say certain shit, but sometimes when people ain't listening, it ain't need no point you talking, bro. Right. Like you talking to a wall. Man. Well, um, a couple more questions before we get you up out of here. Talk to me. Shit, can we get a top five out the city for a little more? Top five? Yeah. Uh, out a top Chicago? six. Let's get a top Chicago? six. Six block. Chicago? Yeah. Damn. Top six. Oh, what the fuck I be listening to in Chicago? That shit really be hard, G. I got to keep it real. Okay, so hold that thought. So you don't listen to anybody in Chicago, so are you a fan of Drill from other cities? Yeah, for sure. For okay. sure. Like my boy D-Thing from New York. D-Thing go crazy. I ain't gonna lie, and I don't care about what the motherfucker got going on. G, music is music. I'm a real gangster. 
But my real homie is 22 G's. That's my homie. We locked oh, in. Oh, I got questions that's I didn't dog, ask him about him. I ain't gonna lie. All right. That's my dog. And I ain't gonna sugarcoat or nothing. 22 G's, that's my dog, fool. He, he, we went through the same shit, so I be keeping the contact with him, make sure his head up, see if he on level. He do the same shit with me. Yeah, that's my boy, fool. Okay, that's crazy, because I was actually going to ask you if you still work with him and if you guys have uh, still con still in contact, like you said. Nah, I always talk to 22. 22, that's my boy. We just did some other shit a couple months ago. We, we stayed doing shit together, bro. So, shit, uh, the fans want to know, when is all this music coming out? Oh, I'm finna drop back to back now, because I'm, I'm at my... Element. You free to do what yeah, you Yeah, I could do what I could do now, so I ain't got no excuse to keep saying it's finna come. And I'm holding the shit back, and I could just let it go now. It's time to let it go. You feel me? Okay. Now, uh, when we were talking a little bit, uh, we were speaking about upcoming, people being upcoming in the city. Now, who are some artists that you think are upcoming that I should shed light on on this platform? In the city? Yeah. Damn. Damn. In the city, folks. Me saying this, bro, I ain't on no hating shit or nothing, bro. But on some real shit, bro, I can't eat. I get a nigga they props if they go crazy. I just don't be trying to speak on too many niggas. Niggas be on dick grind shit, bro. Like, the side I'm on, bro, shit, they don't like us for some reason, bro. I don't know why they don't like us, G. So, even if I get a nigga they props right now, they, yeah, this nigga a bitch. Ooh, he, he, I know he listen to my music and shit like that, gang. Like, come on, gang. Music is music, bro. Don't do it seems bro. like in the city you can't even support him. You feel me, bro? There. So I'd be like, I'd be uncomfortable even saying a motherfucking name. Gee, I ain't gonna lie. I can't even say it right now, bro. I'm not even gonna They get lie. to call you a fan. I'm gonna say me, of... me, 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 me. I don't fool them. That's how I do it. All right. And my boy, Reese Montana. <laughs> Who's that? 7-9 Montana. 7-9 Montana. Look him up, boy. Real clap. Real okay. clap. Do my research. Let him know where to find you at, G. Damn, let him know where to find you at, G. Oh, this is 7-9 Montana right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you see, he ain't even know that was you, G. Yeah, shout, because there's a lot of people, man, who might not know you, know, Sue. Yeah, great nigga. Yeah, Chicago great. Check it out, what's up? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all platforms. Apple Music, everything. What's up? Okay, y'all go stream that. Go stream them boys' shit, man. All right, Lil Mo, we gonna see you, man. All right, my boy. Shout out my boy Louis TV, man. Tap in with him. Everybody tap in with him. It's all love, no bad.